train differently. An old-time fighter, Hagler. He trains at Provincetown at Cape Cod. Then he went to Palm Springs and closed his workouts to the public. Hearns came in to Miami Beach and then moved right in here to Caesars Palace and had open sessions. In fact, he led Arabic dancing in the ring with six beauties there. It uh, sort of reminds you of Muhammad Ali in his training days. But they're all set now. They want to get to it, and we're going to get right down to ringside to Al Michaels and Al Bernstein. All right, Kurt. Well, everybody's been talking about it. Hearns has certain hand speed and the jab and power and all of that, and Hagler is more resolute. And there are a million different factors involved here, and that's why there's been so much talk about who will win. For each man to win, what has to happen? What's the key for each man? I think for Thomas Hearns, he wants to establish his jab. It's very important, and be able to drop the right hand in. He thinks that he can do that against Hagler, and he thinks that he can keep Hagler on the outside by doing that. For Marvin Hagler, the key is to get by that jab, not just get by it, but get inside and then work to the body of that man, Thomas Hearns, and then eventually get to the head. I think the wild card is, will Marvin Hagler switch to righty effectively? If he does that, it might be the key to a victory for him. As is customary, it is the challenger who enters first. It is Hagler's title. Even though Tommy has won two titles, he does not own the middleweight crown that he seeks tonight, and thus he is the first to come in. And the long wait is over, as accompanied by the entourage. He is out of the dressing room and about ready to enter the arena. He's been lighthearted, basically. Kurt talking about the aerobic dancing and bringing folks into the ring and the open sparring right. sessions and open workouts. Right. Quite serious right, right now, though, is Thomas Hearns. And appropriately entering the ring to hail the victors of the Michigan uh, fight song. Still not in view of most here in the arena yet is Hearn, so no response as yet, but very shortly he will be approaching that part of the arena here at Caesars Palace just about now where they are beginning to, to take notice of the entry of Thomas Hearns as he comes down the aisle. The second time Thomas Hearns has had this kind of situation. The last time, of course, against Sugary Leonard, he hopes this turns out differently. Now he's spotted. Up the steps he comes. And into the ring he comes. Thomas Hearns. The only loss, of course, to Sugar Ray Leonard back in 1981, a fight in which he was ahead. He had shown his boxing skills in that fight against Leonard, and many think they may come into play tonight. If Hagler would hurt him early, as Leonard did, that man, Thomas Hearns, has the speed to get on his bicycle and duplicate what he did against Leonard, at least for a certain portion of those uh, fights. He'd like a first-round knockout here. He says he'll do it in three. We'll see. Took Duran out in two. Thomas Hearns in the ring and awaiting Marvin Hagler, who loves to, among other things, make people wait. He is renowned, as you see, the very able corner of Thomas Hearns. And you know, when he fought Sugar Ray Leonard, Al, there was criticism of Emmanuel Stewart. Normally, a very calm corner for Thomas Hearns. On that night, the most pressure packed of his career, there was some chaos in that corner. Emmanuel says we learn from our mistakes with Leonard and we feel uh, we've got it all together now. I'm curious as to the response when Hagler comes in. I thought it was sort of muted in a way. There was some cheering for Hearns, but nothing outrageous by, by any stretch of the imagination. Could just be a muted crowd right now. We're going to find out. It's possible or, in fact, uh, Hagler is the favorite of the crowd. Yeah. Which would be odd considering that, as you said, the betting money has switched back and forth. And if you talk, to, as I said, if you talk to any 10 people, you're going to find five for Hearns, five for Hagler. So it's been a very divided group of people here in Las Vegas, and I suspect around the country as well. Here he comes. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, out of Newark originally, now Brockton, Massachusetts, coming in. 
to a mixed response. record in recent years. And he certainly avenged that draw. A look at the tail of the tape. It tells you what you know probably already about the big reach advantage, the height advantage for Thomas Hearns. And uh, that's a key element in this fight. But for Marvin Hagler, he expects to get inside against Hearns. And if he doesn't do that, could have a long night. Can he possibly win if he doesn't get inside? Well, he could if he catches Hearns on the end of one of his uh, punches, perhaps a left hook. I think that's where him switching righty becomes a key factor. From the outside, I think he's much more effective as a righty. The common opponents, an indication there that Hearns, perhaps with more power, but Marcus Geraldo was not the fighter he was against Hearns that he was against Hagler and that knockout of Duran. So you can look on and on. The number of punches, these are two fighters who will throw a lot of punches tonight. You see Marvin Hagler? throws a lot. He's got a good jab, good combination puncher. The same is true of Thomas Hearns. Look at the number of punches he throws. A lot of left jabs snaking out there. So the pop and ceremony still taking place. We're going to have the national anthem shortly. Al, here's the difference now from Nevada. We go to WBC rules. And these will change somewhat. Ten point must system still in effect. There is no three knockdown rule. There is no standing eight count. Uh, you saved by the bell only in the last round. Again, the three judges will score the fight. International judges, the referee, or the ring doctor can stop the fight. Right now, let's go to the ring and Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, I would direct your attention to the lighted tower, the fantasy tower at Caesars Palace, just to the northeast of us, and you will see unfurled the largest American flag in the world. The flag was created by Mr. Ski Dembski. And now it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce a very talented young man as I ask you to rise, please, as our national anthem will be presented by Doc Severinsen.
Introduction, ladies and gentlemen, the color guard from the Marine Corps Reserve here in Las Vegas. Gentlemen, thank you very much. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next event of the evening. The judges are Dick Young of Los Angeles, California, Herb Santos of Reno, Nevada, and Harry Gibbs of England. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth. Counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo, Flip Omansky, and Charles Filippini. Your referee for the next event of the evening is Mr. Richard Steele. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, the WBC Super Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 159 and three-quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, one defeat, with 34 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Thomas the Hitman Hearn. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts, weighing 159 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 60 wins, two defeats, two draws, and 50 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hedger. All right, Pat, Pat, good eight, let's go. So the two Okay, I gave both Richard fighters Steele. the instructions in the dress room. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands and good luck for both of you. Let's go. Very simple instructions. And finally, it's Hagler against Burns. The camera's going to have to go. Eloquent simplicity came, by Richard Steele. Let's go. Hand. He knows they know. Staring at each other through the national anthem. The camera's there down, of course, so customary before these fights. And here we go. Round one. Hagler, right off the bat, attempting to get inside. He'd love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body. He bangs Marvin. Oh, Hans Pim hot him with a right hand. He hot him on the right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler, he's hot. Hurt. Hagler is done. Hearns got inside. Hit him with a right uppercut. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So it was Hagler coming in like a ball and a good left by Hagler. But Hearns didn't flinch. Marvin going for the body. Wild first round. Oh, what a shot. And it was Hagler who initiated it, not Thomas Hearns. What a first minute of the fight. Tommy Hearns has been able to drop that right hand in, and it has hurt Hagler, a surprise to many people. Another right hand from Hearns. Hearns moving. Hagler still pursuing. Comes in with the right. Picks him with the left foot. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn from right. He could block that right hand easier, and he would land his own left hook. With a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye again. Tommy trying to come inside the hands of Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler's still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. He has Hearns where he'd love to keep on the ropes, but Tommy comes off easily. Another good right by Hearns. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stung a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Hurts in the nose. Wild first round. 
Got him cut up there. Cut up, just box them. Tell him, box them. Just box them. Just get your second win and relax like you nothing had to do with Colin Jones. Just think, Cal. Just box them. When you get through with your shot, move off to one side or the other. You're getting hit on tail end punches. You understand? You can hear Manny Stewart. Talking to her. They want to get the cut on Hagler. You had him go. And the Petronelli's good cut men. Goody and Pat have done okay, excellent job like on the cuts of Hagler. What a shock that that okay. man initiated this war right from the beginning. Right. And you know what? I thought he would do well as a righty. He has done better as a southpaw, and he may stay at that. Again, Stewart telling Hearns to box. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns righty. He wants it to be a street fight. Listen, Marvin Hagler has been rough inside. He's thrown some low blows. He has thrown some elbows. Don't push, don't push. But you know what? Now the right is getting there, but it's not hurting Hagler. We've got our answer, I think, to some extent. Tommy has been, has been hard-pressed to hurt him with that right. Stunned him early, but not in the last round or two. Very early. Adam Sun has him cut. But it was Hagler doing the damage in round two. And now, just as we thought might happen, Tommy Hearns was hurt early, so he is boxing. Now, he has good boxing skills. He did this against Sugar Ray. Can Hagler get to him in this posture? Some people thought... 
go home, go home. Go home. Different angle again now. Right hand from Hagler. And Hearns at that point finished. Off balance and stumbling. And so the man from Brockton, Massachusetts may finally get the respect that he feels he deserves. And acclaim is one of the greatest middleweights in history. Doing nothing to dispute that tonight. Shaking off some thunderous blows in round one, withstanding the barrage, suffering the cut, coming back strong in round two, finishing them in round three. Hearns right above us in the corner. Tommy still shaking. Tommy on his stool. And Tommy, of course, very disappointed and frustrated. And Marvin Hagler, marvelous Marvin Hagler, the legal name, retains the undisputed middleweight title. And let's go to Al Bernstein. Marvin Hagler in a, a chaotic ring here. He says, he says, am I the greatest? And I guess so, Marvin. Marvin, it was, I guess, one of the, perhaps one of the best three-round fights ever. Maybe one of the best middleweights. I guess you did. Here comes Tommy Hearns to say congratulations. We're happy to see that Tommy's all right. And a lot of congratulations Woo! all around and a lot of water as well. Marvin, you Marvin, you took the action to Tommy right away. You went right for his body. He looked like he stunned you momentarily with the right and the first. Did that right hurt no, it you? It didn't bother me, it just made me matter. Okay. I told you I was gonna eat him up like Pat Man. 
I figured once I get through the right hand, then it was all mine, you know, because I think the first big one, which you tried, yeah. tried to put me away out there. And I think that's when I got the cut there, but I wanted to show the world I am the greatest now. Well, you are the greatest middleweight. There's no doubt about that. Did I say three? <laughs> you went right for the body. Was that your plan immediately? That was the way we planned. I want to thank all my sparring partners, especially I want to thank God for giving me the strength and the courage and, uh, and, and, and the confidence to go in here and to know that I, I was the one. I was the champion, but I had to fight like a challenger. That fight, I think, took tremendous courage on your part for this reason. You walked right in against the cannon. You were willing to take the right hand to knock him out. You got it. I figured I had to take punches or to give some, but I told you he was going to get some, too. This was, in some ways, not like the Marvin Hagler we've often seen. Not the ring technician. Better. You were, you bombed. That's it. That's what I felt. I felt as though in every one of my fights I've been fighting, I, I improved, and I put it all together in this fight. <laughs> the Petronelli's here. Uh, I guess you've got to be just thrilled with this. It, probably your biggest moment. The greatest. There's oh, this guy. Yeah. Does he? Now that we All take right. care of the, the, the you know, the That's white the guys. Hurt man. Uh, the hurt man, the hit man. He's, oh, he's the, we love him. I want to say uh, to all the people out there who spent their money, I hope that you got your money's worth because Tommy's a hell of a fighter. And uh, I think I put all my all out here. But uh, the better man won tonight. You have talked about going after Monzone's record. Um, is it still on your mind? And I guess this just fuels you. Getting that record might put you in that class of the greatest middleweight. Definitely. Uh, I'm still after Monzone's record, but I don't think that I'll have a, a big uh, media hype as I did with this one. So I'm going to continue. Okay. This is one of my toughest fights. Marvin, congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Let's go back to Kurt Gowdy. There's been a lot of talk about Hagler retiring. His wife, Bertha, is here. There are four children. And she wants him to retire. When they ask. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, referee Richard Steele stops the bout at two minutes, one second of the third round. The winner by a TKO and still undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hagler. stunned in any case and I think uh, the fact of the matter is that he was not hurt to the point where Marvin Hagler goes down well Marvin Hagler just doesn't go down this is a man with such incredible grit and such courage I just don't think you can say enough about that because he went in against a very good puncher welterweight junior middle or middle took the best he could offer and just his determination and heart won it some thought that he would take Hearns's best shot and leer at him or grin at him. He certainly didn't do that. He was stunned by it, but he was able to withstand it, win the second round, knock him out in the third, and let's go up to Kurt. Talking about being down, you know, Hagler was pulled down against Juan Roldan in March of this year, and they protested that knockdown. They viewed the uh, fight and ruled that it was not a knockdown, so uh, Hagler has never been down in his career, and now he's gone nine years without a defeat. We were talking about the retirement. You've been reading his wife, Bertha, is here with her four children and wants him to retire, and Hagler simply says, that's wife talk. With me is one of the great matchmakers of all time, Teddy Brenner of top rank. What about it, did you ever see better three rounds than that, Teddy? That was three of the greatest rounds I ever saw. I always called Marvin, I'm very friendly with him. I said, Marvin, from tonight on, Marvelous is the only way I'll address him. He was magnificent. Right, you're a matchmaker. Did this 
match up with you would think with all the hype and everything? Everything. Nobody could pick a winner. If you met 50 people, 25 said Hagler, 25 said Hurts. It was really everything that I ever thought a fight could possibly be. Drama, excitement, and courage right out there on the line. What'd you think about the strategy? They just came out and wailed away. And right from the opening three or four seconds of the first blow, this crowd was roaring and on his feet here at Caesars Palace. That's correct. The only way Hagler could possibly win was to go right out, bring it to him, and fight him. And that's the way he did it. You think Hearn made any kind of mistake? Well, Hearn's mistake was uh, he couldn't do anything but stand there because Hagler gave him no room. He had to fight Hagler's fight. Hagler made the tempo of the fight, and Hearns just wasn't physically strong enough. Hagler mentioned Monzon, the Argentinian, who defended his title 14 times, and now that is Hagler's goal. He wants to beat that mark. This was his 11th offense tonight, so he'll be going after Monzo's record. He was absolutely magnificent. I don't think words can properly describe how Hagler fought. He was great. All right, that's Terry uh, uh, Brennan. He'll be making more matches. Will there be a rematch of this one? I don't know if Courage is ready for a rematch, but Hagler's ready. As soon as that cut heals, he's ready to climb into the ring again. Thank you, Teddy. Let's go down now to Al Michaels. Okay, Kurt, so... Teddy Brenner, who has seen a few fights in his time, seen three of the greatest rounds of boxing, a little doubt about it. And since this one ended early, we can go back and view it in its entirety. And we'll go back and replay it for you, beginning with round one and the original commentary.
the water right now, Pat. But it's over the right eye of Marvin Hagler. It's hard to tell him. It's not on the eyelid, though. It looks to be on his forehead. That may not be as much of a problem. As we look at it, that was where it came, I believe, from that uppercut from Tommy Hearns. That was early in the round, but now later. Marvin Hagler digging to the body and throwing a right hook. Fought most of that round as a stick. All of it as a stop one. He took the action of Hearns. A surprise early. Hold up to hold all the height and then go. Round two now. Oh, the oh, left hand by Hagler. They said this fight would be determined on heart and the good chin. Right now, that's exactly what it's being determined on. Both men have been hurt. You can throw the, you can throw the strategy out the window right now. That's the fuck. A wild first Don't round. Don't no hurry. again, trying to uppercut. Cut up band. Cut up, just box them. Stay away and box them. Just box them. Just get your second win and relax like you have to do with Colin Jones. Just think carefully. Just box them. When you get through with your shot, move off to one side or the other. You're getting hit on tail end punches. You understand? You can hear Manny Stewart. Talking to her. They worry about the cut up You had him going. And the Petronelli's good cut men. Goody and Pat have done an excellent job in the cuts right of Hagler. What a shock that that man initiated this war right from the beginning. And you know what? I thought he would do well as a righty. He has done better as a southpaw, and he may stay at that. Again, Stewart telling Hearns to box. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns righty. He wants it to be a street fight. Listen, Marvin Hagler has been rough inside. He's thrown some low blows. He has thrown some elbows. Don't push. Don't push. But you know what? Now the right is getting there, but it's not hurting Hagler. We've got our answer, I think, to some extent. Tommy has been, has been hard-pressed to hurt him with that right. Stunned him early, but not in the last round or two. Very early. Adam Sun has him cut. But it was Hagler doing the damage in round two. And now, just as we thought might happen, Tommy Hearns was hurt early, so he is boxing. Now, he has good boxing skills. He did this against Sugar Ray. Can Hagler get to him in this posture? Some people. 
people thought as he go on, go comes on. off balance, some thought that if if her and stay outside, it's staying on his bicycle because it's all fine with Marvin right, stop it. Stop it. But Marvin has been able to corner him, and when Marvin gets in the corner, he is rough out as well. Again, oh, Hagler oh. is all bloodied. Time is called by Richard Steele to send Hagler over to the ring doctor. It's not Marvin, he's just not the ring doctor in sight. Let him go. Take it away. And so we're back live now after you have viewed the replay of the Hagler Hearns eight minute confrontation, ending at 2 0 1 officially, third round. Technical knockout scored by Marvin Hagler. Hagler was able to take Hearns' best shot despite being stunned in the first round. Tommy could not take advantage of it. And Hagler figured to have won round two even though we have not seen the official scorecards as yet. It was toward the end of round two when you noticed the rubbery legs of Hearns for the first time. And as you look at fight stat, total punches thrown by Hagler in eight minutes, 173. So that's a better than 20 punches a minute, as was the case with Tommy Hearns. The percentage is about even right there, so not much disparity. But uh, when you think about that, that's... Uh, 20 punches per minute basically through the fighter one about every three seconds and what Hagler as Al Bernstein said turned into a street fight exactly the way he he wanted it Hearns uh, by the time he was able to attempt to box and get outside and try to stay away it was too late he'd been hurt the legs were rubbery and down he went so chances are even though it was a great great fight you would not think there would be a great outcry for a rematch in light of the fact that Hagler was was dominant. It was a very exciting eight minutes. It was something that the people here at Caesars Palace and those viewing on television will remember for quite some time. But there was little doubt who is the better fighter as marvelous Marvel.